This video is brought to you by the Joker because Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider are just full of jokes. Yeah, I'm back, but also I'm black. Hey, what is up everybody? Yes, I return to your phone, your computer, your TV, your tablet, your laptop. I don't know what you are watching me on at this very moment right now. I could be on your toilet, on the fridge, wherever you are, welcome back. It's me, it's Malcolm, and today. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I know I have been gone for a couple of days. I want to apologize about that. Just been working, just been tired. I do have a full-time job. I don't do YouTube full-time, obviously. So, hello. We're back. We're gonna do, this is gonna be a quick video because this is more so of an update to a video I did last, which was about the Nickelodeon documentary, which is the Quiet On Set documentary, talking about how all the child stars were affected by, you know, Dan Schneider, Brian Peck, and just Hollywood in general. So I just wanna give a quick, quick update about that. And then Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider both made statements in this variety article so please give that a read as well i only found out about this because alexa nicholas made some tweets about uh nickelodeon and dan Snyder making statements and pretty much how i feel i feel like a lot of people are going to feel like the statements are just like covering their ass in the last video i talked about the kids choice awards the kids choice awards usually takes place around this time of year. I obviously can't prove it, but when I looked it up, um, the Kids' Choice Awards were supposed to be on March 18th, which is this weekend. Obviously, that's not the case because Nickelodeon just announced today that their Kids' Choice Awards is actually on July 13th of 2024. In the comment section of the Instagram post announcing the Kids' Choice Awards, People are very confused. They're they're saying, you know, oh, they usually do their show in March or April. What's going on? So Nickelodeon did something they usually don't do without an explanation. And considering the timing of everything, I thought that was a little bit suspicious. Just wanted to point that out and point out uh, how weird that was. Like I said, uh, we're gonna talk about this Variety article that has uh, statements from Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon. We're gonna be talking about someone named Kyle Sullivan. If you know who Kyle Sullivan is, that's great. But a lot of people obviously do not know who he is. So let's just talk about it. He usually wears glasses when he was younger because he was part of the All That cast. If somebody's like very confused about how this all connects, he also has an experience with Brian Peck that he um, talked about in this article. I don't know if it's a trigger warning, but there is mention of John Wayne Gacy in this. Let me just read like a quick, quick bio of who Kyle Sullivan is. And then we're gonna read his experience with Brian Peck in the Variety article. And even there's a mention of Dan Schneider on his end um, and him talking to the All That cast. So we're gonna read all that as well. Kyle Sullivan was born on September 24th, 1988 in Los Angeles, California. He's an actor known for being in Malcolm in the Middle, Soldier, and of course, all that, like I mentioned. I kind of remember Kyle because he did a lot of the wacky bits where I think he was like a game show contestant for like one of the skits and he would be like really out there, really outlandish. There's another skit where he was like hanging out with this uh, like goth chick and like that was a bit uh, for a skit. More actors that he has collaborated with, especially on the All That cast. This story is around the same time that Drake Bell was being affected. I believe I could, if I got the timeline wrong, I do apologize. I'm not trying to get anything wrong when it comes to getting the story correct. For all the survivors so far, let's definitely give them the support that is necessary because I have some thoughts about, thoughts about Nickelodeon pushing their Kids' Choice Awards back, which is, like I said in my last video, one of their biggest shows of the year. We'll get to it, we'll get to it we will get to it. We're gonna talk about an experience that Kyle Sullivan had at a barbecue at Brian Peck's house. Sullivan also recounted a barbecue at Peck's house where he had a shrine to the Planet of the Apes in the garage and one painting that didn't belong. 
a birthday clown with balloons. When the kids asked Peck about it, he proudly showed them that it was a gift, a gift from the serial killer John Wayne Gacy. And on the back mess was a message saying, Brian, I hope you enjoy the painting. Best wishes. Your friend, John Wayne Gacy. Can I speak? Can I speak? Okay. It's one thing to look at these stories from these notorious people in human history, but it's another thing. It's another thing to proudly talk about an item you got from a serial killer. If if, if you if you want to disagree with me, you got it. Um, th that's a red flag. <laughs> I. I have no words. I think that's creepy. And I think that's nothing to brag about. Additionally, he showed them letters and photos in the nightstand in his bedroom from Gacy as they had to become pen pals while Gacy was in prison. Meaning, this Brian Peck person was a fan of John Wayne Gacy after his conviction. Your instinct is to give someone the benefit of the doubt if you've ever known them for that long. Even in the face of this really bad sign, said Sullivan. This man, who was like a who is like trusted as basically a supervisor of kids, is not safe. I just think, once again, I think it's so sad. We have consumed all this comedy, this kiki hee hee, but hearing how they were treated behind the scenes just breaks my heart and it just really goes to show that we really don't know like what's going on there's always the you know don't judge a book by its cover i think that goes a lot of ways right i think that saying can go a lot of ways we see these people they're making us laugh they they seem very joyous they seem very boisterous right and then to hear what they were really dealing with behind the scenes just going back to you know the stars from boy meets world where they said you know brian peck manipulated us and you know we wish we took what we said back we wish we would have never defended him things like that so it's just kind of again it's so heartbreaking to hear that these you know kids at the time were just going through this you know i i i think I hope that part especially doesn't get lost. Like, yes, they're adults now, and it's kind of hard to see them as a kid in all this, but remember that they were kids when they were dealing with this, and I think we cannot forget that part. Bell, for his part, also gave him the benefit of the doubt. He spent many nights at Pex, and then everything changed with Brian one morning, he said. I was sleeping on the couch where I would usually wake up to him and he was sexually assaulting me. I froze, it was in complete shock and I had no idea what to do or how to react. And I have no idea how to get out of this situation, Bell said. So we're talking about Drake Bell's uh, story as well here. 15 at the time, which again, we have to remember they were minors at this time. Like yes, they're adults now, but we still have to remember that they were kids when they were dealing with this, which, of course, why it took so long for them to finally feel brave enough to speak out, you know? Didn't know what to do and it, quote, became this secret, unquote, because he knew that if he stopped going to Peck's, people would ask questions. Peck was so apologetic, saying it would never happen again. And then it happened again. He figured out how to convince my mom and everyone around to any time I, have, I would have an addition or any time I needed work on dialogue or anything. I somehow ended up back at Brian's house and it just got worse and worse and worse. I was just trapped. I had no way out, said Belle. The abuse was extensive and it got pretty brutal. I don't know how to elaborate, elaborate that on camera, really. Why don't you think of the worst stuff that someone could do to somebody as sexual assault? And then I'll answer your question. I don't know how else to put it. And I think what's so crazy about this is 
I'm again I'm gonna read Nickelodeon's statement later, but it seems like Nickelodeon is acting like they really had no idea that this was going on. But considering that it happened to multiple stars under their brand with the same person, I'm very inclined to believe, and I would just I'm just giving my personal opinion. I'm very inclined to believe that Nickelodeon knew about it, but as long as it wasn't put in the papers, they didn't care about it. So it's definitely giving boys club mentality. And I used that term in my last video as well, but basically just to give you like a explanation, a boys club is kind of like a phrasing used for like these organizations that, you know, when something super serious happens, mostly related to um, SA and things like that. As long it's it's pretty much like don't tell like don't talk about it kind of thing or like you'll regret it kind of thing. The best case the best scenario I can like relate this to was um, the Chicago Blackhawks. And some people don't know what I'm talking about, but basically this one player was being assaulted. Um, it the the team was kind of ignoring everything that was happening to him. One coach like was on a different team at the time and he got either he fired he either got fired or he quit almost immediately after the information came out people were like okay well if this all happened and they won these championships around then what's the repercussions and to be honest there really wasn't enough repercussions to fit the crime i think the nhl at the time which is the national hockey league for those that don't know the NHL definitely seemed like they wanted to get rid of this story as fast as possible. And what makes this really like, it's, it's so, it's such like a circular moment because this year five NHL players or they have turned themselves in because when they were on the junior hockey team, they um, apparently assaulted someone in a hotel. So five NHL players like, are on no team at all right now they basically got fired without getting fired basically and um that's kind of like the best comparison i can make in modern times to what the nickelodeon stars and these child stars went through i think that's the best thing i can compare it to after the august 2003 arrest schneider called him and asked if peck's arrest had to do anything to do with him quote i was close enough with dan that i was like yeah man this is what he's been doing and dan just goes yeah don't need to talk any more about it that's all i need to hear are you okay do you need anything for me is there anything that you need he recalled Ryan was spending so much time around me, it was pretty obvious. And this is what I mean when I say Nickelodeon acting like they didn't know shit is such bullshit to me. Again, personal opinion. Soon after the arrest, after a table read for all that, Sullivan, we're talking about Sullivan again, Sullivan claims that Schneider asked the parents to leave the room for, quote, our friends to speak to the kids. The kids were told Peck wouldn't be there anymore. Asking if anyone had anything to say, Schneider told the, uh, the documentary producers that he had no part in telling the All That family what had transpired. It does get to a point, and I hope I'm never in a situation like this, it does get to a point where maybe you should tell the parents what's going on and, you know, as the parents, let them make the, the decision for their kids because... If I'm a child actor, right, and you say, you know, hey, this person was a bad person, um, he's gone, he's not coming back, and and this was kind of like my shot to like make it, I guess. I would I would want to keep acting, of course. I would want to keep you know doing the things so I can make it bigger, and, you know, make it to movies and whatnot. Like, what if my what if my mom and dad, like, what if mom and dad say I can't act anymore? So. I'm just screwed and I have to go back to, you know, doing, you know, regular things, I guess. I think I, I don't, I obviously can't prove that that's what they were thinking, but I'm kind of like in a way putting myself in their shoes with that. And I can only imagine how the parents would have reacted if they knew then, you know, or maybe they did know. I don't know. 
I have a lot of questions and I know they're going to be answered in the documentary, so I'm not really going to present them now. Um, the documentary is supposed to be coming out this weekend. This is around the time the Kids' Choice Awards were supposed to be, but as we know now, the Kids' Choice Awards are on July 13th, which is summer, which I feel like Nickelodeon is hoping that the documentary will blow over. You know, news articles will stop writing about it and people will forget. I, 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 I just don't think this is going to go away. Like, even as I was about to record, uh, more people have come out about Brian Peck and like how, you know, they really didn't know the severity of the abuse that he was like, like doing to these kids. So I don't think this is going to go away anytime soon. And um, I even just read a tweet earlier that Alexa Nicholas got um, got summoned or something, or she's possibly getting sued. I I, I can't one hundred percent remember what it is right now, but she did tweet something about like she got some paperwork about something. Uh, it's it, it's very telling that Nickelodeon is trying everything that they can to make this go away as soon as possible. Don't make this a big thing. And I'm very surprised that they actually had a spokesperson make a statement. So let's actually read that statement. A spokesperson for Nickelodeon gave the following statement to Variety. Though we cannot corroborate or negate allegations of behaviors from productions decades ago, Nickelodeon, as a matter of policy, investigates all formal complaints as part of our commitment to fostering a safe and professional workplace environment free of harassment or other kinds of in inappropriate conduct. Our highest priorities are the well-being and best interests not just of our employees, cast, and crew, but all the children, and we have adopted numerous safeguards over the years to help ensure we are, are living up to our own high standards and the expectation of our audience. Can I speak? If this is not one of the most PR of PR responses from any company, I don't know what is. What I'm getting from the vibe from this statement here is, hey, that happened a long time ago, so we really can't comment on it. However, comma, we do care about the safety of the children. There were charges filed. Brian Peck was sentenced. Okay. He is a registered offender. And you as a company cannot denounce this one person that has been confirmed to have done these things and not only that he is on a list this is so pr 101 this is such a slam dunk for nickelodeon to say hey that brian peck person we did work with him we were unaware of it however comma we are very disgusted by his actions we deeply regret that he was ever around any of our stars like nothing about how you're sorry to the victims all those years ago this was such a blanket statement, and I hope people didn't really buy this shit, but I think it's really telling that Nickelodeon knew something and they just don't care. Speaking of not caring, we're going to talk about Dan Schneider, okay? Because he also made a statement to Variety in the same article, which I thought the timing of that was very weird, but I digress. Regarding Bell, the spokesperson added, now that Drake Bell has disclosed his identity as the plaintiff in the 2004 case, we are dismayed and saddened to learn the trauma he has endured, and we commend and support the strength required to come forward. Can I speak? Let's remember, he got sentenced in 2004, right? It's been known for 20 years that Brian Peck has done something to a child act. And the fact that Nickelodeon really is trying to say, now that we know who it was, now we are deepened and saddened and distraught by this information. Are you kidding me? Maybe I'm tripping, but that phrasing gives, oh, we were hoping it wasn't going to be anybody major. Otherwise, we wouldn't have cared. Maybe, maybe I'm reading into it wrong. Maybe I'm being a little bit over emotional, 
but how it is coming off is basically saying ah shucks it's a it's a star that everybody recognizes now we have to now we have to say we're sorry and we're apologizing for it there's multiple counts of what brian peck did right so it wasn't just a one-time thing so you mean to tell me because drake's you mean to tell me because drake bell spoke up now you're sorry schneider also released the following statement at the end of the documentary everything that happened on the shows I ran was carefully scrutinized by dozens of evolved adults. All stories, dialogue, costumes, and makeup were fully approved by network executives on two coasts. A standards and practices group read and ultimately approved every script, and programming executives reviewed and approved all episodes. In addition, every day on set, there were always parents and caregivers and their friends watching us rehearse and film. Can I speak? Maybe I'm tripping, but it definitely sounds like Dan Schneider is throwing everybody else under the bus because he can't take accountability for putting these kids in a vulnerable position to begin with. This is kind of like James Charles, you know, I'm, I'm talking about him again. This is kind of like James Charles trying to tell people to be careful in other people's DMs. And you know what's trippy to me? Is he, I, 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 I feel like he's kind of going to get away with it, right? And what I mean by that is, if you're going to throw everybody under the bus, you're going to say, oh, the parents were there. Oh, the executives, the executives approved this. So what he's basically saying is he had no power at all, but let's talk about how Danielle Monet that I referenced in my last video talked about how he would like really fight for more revealing clothing for the actors. So I'm very confused how he's really going to sit there and be like, oh, it wasn't my fault that all that stuff happened. And remember how I said that there was a lot of jokes that as an adult, you look back at the old Nickelodeon and you can see all the innuendos and stuff. After these statements and stuff came out, Alexa Nicholas, that who I've referenced a lot uh, in these videos, she actually made a tweet basically saying, Nickelodeon, I am asking you to remove this scene on Zoe 101 where I am sexualized as a child where Dan Schneider took part in creating a scene where I say, quote, this shirt makes me look chesty. I would also like the scene where I say, how do we get these boobs to also be removed? And let's just go back to the statement where Dan Schneider said the script was approved and basically trying to pass the buck to everybody but himself. We have someone that had direct contact with him basically saying, no, 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 this was a Dan Schneider thing because it says Dan Schneider took a part in creating a scene, which means he had full control of what was going to happen in the scene. You know what I'm saying? So Dan Schneider trying to give a little, oh, it wasn't my fault. Like, oh, shucks, oh, shucks. And I just want to finish it off with this because I, I am well past 30 minutes right now and I wasn't expecting to talk this long, but I guess I still had a lot to say. And I think these statements are absolute bullshit. Um, if you haven't, if you haven't been able to tell from my reaction, I think in the end, this documentary, I hope it changes something. I don't know if, you know, lawsuits are going to be filed. I don't know what's going to happen. Right. Uh, I'm watching on pins and needles like everybody else. I'm curious on everybody's experiences that they're going to be talking about on this two part series. I don't know if Nickelodeon is going to give another response after the docuseries comes out and even more people are aware of what happened on their sets. I don't know. I'm very curious. I know you're curious. I was going to read some comments from my last video, but again, this video has gone a little bit too long. I might do that in a separate, separate video. Um, so if you have any thoughts you'd like me to discuss in another video, please leave that in the comment section below. But I am kind of out of time and I ran out of things to rhyme. So once again, it is Malcolm. That's me. If you made it this far, leave a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't yet. If you made it this far, thank you very much. I know I'll be yap, yap, yapping, but yet you're still here. Um, I have nothing else to say, except I hope you have 
a good day. So without further ado, I wish you well, I wish you good health, and I will see you again next time.